Virgo, it's me Stormy and welcome to 2020 and welcome to the January 2020 horoscope. I look forward to walking through the rest of this year every week, every month with you, seeing how it's going to unfold. I think it's going to be a really good year. I truly, truly do. So make sure right here at the beginning of the year, if you are not signed up for the free forecast marathon that I'm doing with astrologyhub.com, you can get signed up in the description box down below. It's going to be January 9th through the 12th and we're going to be talking about all of 2020, 12 different astrologers, there's ceremony, there's connection. It's going to be a really big, beautiful experience. My first time, your first time. So let's do this deal together. Okay. Link in the description box down below. All right, Virgo, let's get in here and let's get to it. Right at the beginning of the month, a month loaded with a lunar eclipse, rare astrological alignment of Saturn and Pluto being in conjunction, Uranus coming out of retrograde, we've got business to take care of. So right here at the beginning of the month, you can see that your fifth house is big, busy, and beautiful. And if you've watched your yearly horoscope, you know that it's going to be big, busy, and beautiful for 2020. But right here at the beginning of the month, we see Jupiter and Mercury, which is your ruling planet, together in conjunction here in this fifth house. So what this is telling me is that Jupiter is the bigger mind. Mercury is the smaller mind. Jupiter makes these big old plans and Mercury's like, yes, we need some details to make that big old plan happen, right? <laughs> so the two mind planets are working together here in your fifth house. So one of the things that you may find with this um, Jupiter Mercury conjunction here is that you are making big plans for this fifth house area of your life. The fifth house is children, it's play, it's joy, it's true love and romance, it's new projects, new ideas, self-expression, entrepreneurial pursuits, any business thing that you want to start or take on that's your own will fall in this house as well. So there could be conversation, documentation, anything happening right here to make these big plans prepare to play out for you in 2020. So if you're thinking about starting that new business, go on ahead and do it right here, okay? On the 3rd of January, we've got Mars leaving his home, comfort of the Scorpio energy, moving into the energy of Sagittarius. Now this is going to light up your fourth house. So let's talk about that. Mars is Mars, my friends. Mars is action, energy, assertion, aggression, exuberance. He's movement. He's boots on the ground. I'm doing things, right? And he's in Sagittarius, which is very investigative. I'm gathering information. I'm sharing information. I'm open-minded. Maybe even I want to travel. I'm big picture kind of energy. So now Mars is also working in a big picture place, but in your fourth house, home, family, real estate, property. So what I can tell you about Mars in the fourth house is first of all, you will clean house with Mars in the fourth house. If that means you've got to get those things marked and ready for donation, if you are renovating your house, if you're cleaning your house, Mars could just be helping you clean out people that don't belong in your house anymore. If you've got freeloaders over there, you might be like, nope, I told you, you had one year, 2020, you're out, right? If there's a family connection that has been strained or something like that, Mars is also an energy of conflict, but it's the kind of conflict that clears the air. Right? So if you've had or you need to have some kind of pacha, some kind of catalyst to happen in this fourth house area, Mars will certainly bring it to the surface. So one of the other things that I keep thinking with Mars here in the fourth house is um, this is your emotional security as well. Like the foundation that you're standing upon, you're building your ideas and your beliefs upon. With Mars here, um, you could be feeling a little bit restless, like you're thinking a lot, like you're, you're just doing extra. So remember with Mars here, if it's in your fourth house, clean up, do the laundry, do the home and the domestic things, maybe do some traveling if that's what's on your agenda, but get the energy out of your body. Don't just sit and think with it because you will go into analysis paralysis and make yourself crazy trying to perfect this area and that's not going to be useful to you at all. Instead, invite some friends over, have a chai, do you, but use that energy well, okay? On January 8th, 
Jupiter is going to come into conjunction with this transiting south node and this is an important date to note because Jupiter is about expansion but he's in Capricorn so he slowed down a little bit so now he's about the wisdom of maturity the wisdom of structure the south node is about looking at the past why you're going to detach why you're going to let something in this area of your life go as these two are traveling in conjunction with each other the eighth is about reflection in this last year, Virgo, because what's coming into 2020 with you is nothing new. You've seen it. It's been on your plate for at least a year. You're just bringing new actions and new attitudes and new perspectives to something old so that it can move on. So in this last year, what have you seen about this fifth house area of your life? What have you seen about your romantic life? What have you seen about your beliefs of children starting your own business, your own joy, your own play? And where have you had to detach from something, maybe even your own old ideas, in order to allow this area to breathe and to get bigger and to move towards your expansion of this north node? Where have you had to let go of some of the things that you thought were just you in order to allow new people in to teach you about your next phase of life and development? Where have you had to do that? This is a reflection day on the 8th. It's karmic. It's about looking at that past, but it is not about setting the intentions of things to come forward. You can do that as we get to the 10th and the 11th, okay? Speaking of, on the 10th, we have got a full moon lunar eclipse happening up here in Cancer at 20 degrees. Okay, so this lunar eclipse is going to light up your 11th house. Now, the lunar eclipse is still our full moon for the month, so we're going to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment. There needs to be a shift made here. But this lunar eclipse, instead of impacting you for four weeks, is going to impact you for six months. So truly, what have you shed over here to make space for new friends, groupings, organizations. If you're starting your own business, you're going to have to network that sucker, right? You're going to have to put yourself out there. Let your um, your group and your social media network spread your word. Truly, in your friendship zones, Virgo, if you have decided to have children, start a business, get divorced, begin a new romance, it's naturally going to put you in the space of new friends, new connections, which means you may be moving away from some other ones that don't fit your life and your world anymore at that time, right? Because when we get into new areas of our lives, the universe is kind and it gives us new soulmates to travel with to help us expand ourselves out there. So you can definitely expect to see over this next six months some changes in your social groups, your social groupings, and truly, if you're doing something in business or you're doing something where you're trying to expand out, where are you at socially in order to help yourself, okay? All right, when we get to the 11th, we've got Uranus coming out of retrograde. He's up here in the energy of Taurus, making a nice place in your ninth house here. Now, when Uranus has been retrograde, he's our planet that tears down our barriers. He's like, oh, this has worked for you, but these are not going to work anymore. We need some new structure. We need some new ideas. Let's tear these down. We have to innovate here, Virgo. And right here, Virgo, can you imagine in your ninth house, the house of your beliefs, right? your beliefs, your morals, your ethics, your faith, the level of faith and connection you have to this planet, your study, your education, your information, right? All of these things, your publishing, your broadcasting, your media, any way that you expand out that we get to see you being seen, right? Uranus has been retrograde and he's been showing you. He's like, that's not going to work, Virgo. I can't take you forward on that. You're going to stay still if you do not innovate this area. So now on the 11th, as Uranus is out of retrograde, he's showing us and helping us to understand everything that you've seen and you understand what you need to change and what you need to keep because not everything was broken. He only took out the things that were broken. So that's good news. So whatever's left, you'll understand what to see what to keep, what to change here in this ninth house area. Do you need more education? Do you need training? Do you need certification? Are you ready to travel? Your fifth house is loaded, right? Are you ready to expand, have a baby? That would certainly be some real live expansion from this fifth house, right? So whatever it is, Uranus is prepared to help you be innovative and change that area. Now also on the 11th or 12th, depending on where you live, we're going to have this great Saturn-Pluto conjunction happening here in your fifth house. Now. Saturn and Pluto coming together. Pluto says, okay, Virgo, this is your Phoenix energy. I need you to die off in one way and live fully, big, 
evolved in another way. And Saturn says, okay, I'm going to mature you. I'm going to take this to the next level, right? Because we need to be successful. We need to succeed. We need to achieve, but we can only do that by going to the next level. So as these two work together, we evolve. And what this can sometimes feel like as the um, symptom of this particular um, conjunction is it can feel like loss. It can feel like something has been, has been pulled out, right? Now, this is happening in a fellow earth sign, so that's quite favorable to you, but it can feel like um, there is a significant change that has happened here. Whatever this significant change is, remember this is about your evolution and it is your map to where you will need to put in the work, where you need to make decisions, where you need to let these groupings in, where you gotta get some different ideas in order to fill this hole. The universe will literally walk you right to it if you will acknowledge what this shift and this change is um, in this area. Now for some of you, this could look like, what could this look like? This can look like a change between you and a lover. If the relationship is not strong, um, it could end it. It could absolutely end that relationship. And if it does, just know the rest of these helpers will move you along this year and bring you a connection that's deeper and more satisfactory than with anybody that you've probably experienced in a long time because it will demand your evolution so you can't pull in that same vibe unless you absolutely refuse to change. This could also be um, a situation where maybe you decide to quit your job, right? You're like, I'm gonna quit my job and I'm starting my own entrepreneurial pursuit from my house and I've renovated it to make my own office, right? Whatever it is, whatever it pulls out, something will immediately show you the way to fill that hole as well, okay? On the 12th, nope, on the 13th, let's do the 13th. On the 13th, we've got Venus hightailing it out of the energy of Aquarius, and she's going to move up here into the energy of Pisces. Now, this is going to light up your seventh house. So this brings a lot of love, a lot of beauty to your relationships. This is business relationships, um, romantic relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships, you know, you and your astrologer may be deep in this year or something like that, but Venus brings a lot of beauty to that relationship. She can also bring in significant relationships that do one of two things, right? One, it can bring in a relationship that shows you how to make money, that brings more money to your table. If you've decided to start your own business, you're networking, you get a significant connection. Boom, right? It happens just that easy. If if you have decided to have a baby that will change your house, that will expand your body, and it will also expand your budget, right? And Venus may be a little bit expensive in that seventh house. So there's a lot of different connections and how this could actually impact you, but it is ultimately a beautiful relationship energy. It's beautiful for refreshing a relationship. It's beautiful for if you were getting married or something like that at this time or celebrating in some way, shape, or form, this is wonderful. And if you are single, this is a mingle energy this can help you there as well and if you are single not looking to mingle just enjoy you enjoy and love on the people who have treated you well who are in your tribe and who are team virgo okay all right, as we get to the 16th of the month, we see this sixth house getting very, very busy. Mercury's on the road, the sun's on the road, so we've got Mercury moving up here, we've got the sun moving up here, and then on the 24th, we have got the new moon happening up here in your sixth house. So this is going to light up your daily routines, your thinking, freelance projects, health, wellness, Virgo in the sixth house because it's the house that you naturally rule. I'm always thinking about what you're thinking, what is happening in that beautiful head of yours. What are you thinking? Hopefully you're not overthinking and putting yourself in the position of analysis paralysis, right? So take a break. Venus is over here in your relationship house. Relax, have a beverage, right? Have a chai, have a croissant. Just try and enjoy the daily routine. Whatever does need to be adjusted or anything you would like to bring in here, this is a connection of head and heart coming together in your daily routine and how you're taking care of yourself, in your health. And I'm just getting this picture, so I'm not sure who this is for. Please leave it for me in the um, comment section down below. Someone is having, this is someone's back. Someone's back is something's happening here with someone's back. Maybe it's a surgery. You're having a back surgery. Uh, maybe you're just indulging and having some delicious massage, but I see this as a space of healing, I think. So someone's maybe doing a back surgery or doing something like that. Um, 
in your daily routine, if you've cut some people out of your family, if you've had a conflict with a family member or you've changed your house, this will change how busy your daily routine is and maybe it's tearing down a wall or something, the backbone, the spine of something we're seeing. So if that's you, please put that in the comment section down below so I know who they're telling me about, okay? So this will definitely make a shift in that daily routine. Now, two days I want to tell you about before I end this video, the 27th and the 28th. Now, on the 27th, Venus and Neptune will officially be conjunct here in your 7th house, and I love them so much. I call them the Bopsy Twins because when they're together, everything is so delicious. It's so blissful. Just the world is so good. They're so indulgent together, but they are not <clears throat> necessarily clear. It's a little bit foggy. Information's a little bit foggy. It feels good. It's so good for psychic development. It's so delicious for creativity, for food, for having the friends over, like do all of that. But it's not great for making big decisions. I wouldn't sign any paperwork on this day. I wouldn't make any super big commitments that you don't feel grounded to net. I do think for some of you, this could be a great conception day. If that's a thing that you're looking for in your life, conceiving a baby, conceiving a business, I do think that that's good. But just give it a couple days before you put any ink on that okay because what's going to happen on the 28th is Mars down here is going to square Neptune up here okay he's going to say hey wait a minute you are missing a piece of information hey wait a minute something needs to be addressed here and this will help you balance out between your fourth house and your seventh house for many of you I do think that this could be the beginning of that business but Mars is trying to show you that you don't have all of the facts or that something needs to be adjusted so allow the 27th the 28th and the 29th to kind of be decision making information gathering days for you and if there is action that you need to take it will lead to information ultimately so you can make decisions on the other side all right, Virgo, I think it's going to be a good month. It's going to be a good year. Please leave me in the comment section down below how this is happening for you. How is this manifesting? How are you doing? Whatever's going on for you, let me know in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I will see you in the free forecast marathon. And of course, in Astrology 101 and 102, which launch in February. I love you, Virgos. Goodbye.